AEW president and CEO Tony Khan reportedly says there's no such thing as long-term booking anymore. It's week to week. Speaking of AEW, the media deal with WBD is reportedly in its final stages, and we have an update on what's going to happen with pay-per-views and the Max streaming service. The Lucha Brothers reportedly are not yet signed by WWE because they're still actually under contract to All Elite Wrestling. Miro, the former AEW TNT champion, has reportedly requested his release from AEW. The Outrunners are reportedly under contract to All Elite Wrestling, despite the no All Elite graphic just yet. Nigel McGuinness has a final warning for Brian Danielson on AEW Collision. Hangman Adam Page will face Jeff Jarrett in a Lumberjack strap match at Dynamite Grand Slam. An update on what exactly are the rules for Soraya's rules when it's Soraya versus Jamie Hayter at AEW Grand Slam. Britt Baker will be competing on Dynamite's fifth anniversary next week. Chris Jericho's match for AEW Collision Grand Slam has been revealed. The Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions Dustin Rhodes and Sammy Guevara retained the titles this past week on Collision. Guevara has also called out Kazuchika Okada for an AEW Continental Title Eliminator match. An update when it comes to Janelle Grant's legal team on the Southern District of New York investigation into WWE and Vince McMahon and details on who put together the cinematic Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns segment on SmackDown this week. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's begin with Tony Khan's reported philosophy on long-term versus week-to-week -week booking. AEW has received criticism for some of the lack of story in some of their feuds and storylines on All Elite Wrestling Television. But how has the philosophy from AEW president, CEO, and head of creative Tony Khan changed when it regards to putting his storylines and stories together? Well, according to Brian Alvarez, this is what Tony Khan has said when it comes to his philosophy on long-term storytelling. Okay, I can't tell you what day this happened. But I do know that there was a day where Tony Khan started telling people there's no such thing as long-term booking anymore. It's week to week. And when I heard that, I was like, what? He, he didn't really say that. But if you watch the shows, that's what happened. Now, do you agree with what Brian Alvarez says? Do you believe what Brian Alvarez says? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below. Now, of course, we're reportedly mere days away from getting an announcement regarding this All Elite Wrestling television deal with Warner Brothers Discovery to keep AEW on TNT, TBS, as well as possibly True TV. And now we've got more details as to how this all will look. It seems like only a matter of time before AEW announces a new media rights deal with Warner Brothers Discovery. Last week, Puck reported that a four-year deal, three guaranteed and one optional, worth around $170 million per year had been agreed to with AEW programming remaining on TNT and TBS and additionally airing on True TV. Andrew Zarian touched on that report during his Mat Men podcast this weekend, confirming that the deal is done and just a few things left to be finalized. Zarian also said that AEW pay-per-views will finally make its way to the Max streaming platform in January, though he noted they can still be accessed on other selected platforms. Here's what Zarian had said during the episode of the Mat Men podcast. I would say that it is another hour of programming. Shockwave will be programming. <laughs> I, I don't... I don't know if it's going to be, you know, replacing Rampage on another station or, uh, you know, they're going to do two, you know, both of those. Yeah, yeah. It could be possible that true, you know, Turner came at the last minute and was like, okay, we want to put these two on, on true TV. And that Fox thing is kind of out the window. Okay. You know, that's a possibility too. I don't know because I never heard the true TV report. That's actually very unique to me. Right, right, right. Uh, I, I will say that they will be on max in January. They could do it that. sooner, I, I, but I do know that they're planning on January. I do know that pay-per-views are going to be on there. They don't have an exclusivity on the pay-per-view, yeah. so it'll also be available other places. Like WWE is, you know, you could still order right. those pay-per-views that are on Peacock, the PLEs. I don't know pricing. Uh, I never asked. I do know that there is a very, very, uh, again, I'm very certain that they're going to be simulcasting okay. also. That's part of what's in the works. I don't know if that'll be from the beginning of the Max deal or they'll add mm -hmm. it later on, but they will have they will be there. So the wording here, and, and this is where I, I would 
Now, the Lucha Brothers. What is the latest when it comes to the Lucha Brothers? Well, last week it was reported that they had signed or agreed multi-year deals with WWE, but maybe not so fast. Last week, reports emerged that the Lucha Brothers, Penta El Zero Miedo and Ray Phoenix, had signed with WWE on multi-year deals. While it is expected that WWE is the ultimate destination, a number of WWE sources have confirmed to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select that the two are not signed just yet. One even indicated that they believe Ray Phoenix is technically still under contract with AEW and that the transition to WWE won't be as smooth as expected. AEW sources have not confirmed Phoenix's contract status. Both wrestlers, as of right now, remain on AEW's official roster page. When Fightful have asked AEW and WWE in an official capacity on the status of either talent, they've not gained an answer. Regarding the word and the report that merchandising was underway, Lucha Blog noted on Twitter that, quote, WWE is quickly making Lucha Brothers merch while AEW didn't. That talking point is a little apple to oranges. Those trademarks uh, were out there months ago too. They're getting WWE-owned uh, gimmicks and their merch. They held on to some merch rights of AEW, a wholly different setup, according to Lucha Blog. Now, Penta has told numerous people throughout the summer that he was expecting to go to WWE and had been in contact with the company. He'd also told those that he spoke with that he and Phoenix were a package deal and preferred to go directly to the WWE main roster. Of course, if you get any more details on that, of course, we'll let you know. Now, speaking of a former WWE superstar, currently in AEW, possibly looking to go back, let's talk about Miro. Fightful Select's Sean Ross Sapp reported over the weekend that he had learned that Miro, formerly Rusev, has asked for his release from All Elite Wrestling. Miro hasn't wrestled for AEW at all this year in 2024. Last winger match at AEW World's End at the end of last year in December of 2023. Fightful have been told that Miro was sidelined longer than AEW expected after that match, but he has been healthy for quite some time. There was some consideration internally to use him in the AEW All-In Casino Gauntlet, and he had pitched working with John Moxley earlier this year. Miro and AEW were unable to get on the same page creatively, something that has become somewhat common for the two sides over over recent years. Miro only worked seven matches for AEW in 2023 and has only wrestled 11 matches since December of 2021. Fightful say they've not learned if Miro was granted his release or if there's interest from WWE. Miro reportedly is earning into the seven figures. Miro had signed a contract upon joining AEW in September 2020 that was set to expire in the spring of 2022. However, he signed a four-year extension around that time that could still have him with AEW until the spring of 2020. 2026. Now, names that are under contract to AEW2, the Outrunners, are reportedly all elite. They aren't too old and too young, and they're also too signed. Turbo Floyd and Truth Magnum, known as the Outrunners, have exploded in popularity recently between their vignettes and live show reactions. Fightful have been told that AEW has been very happy with their reactions and reception, and a push is expected to continue. While there has been no All Elite graphic for the duo, they've worked with AEW and Ring of Honor regularly for over a year. Prior to that, they'd been regulars on the NWA and OVW scene. Fightful have been told by sources in AEW that the duo are under contract, but the specifics of the contract or when it was signed was not outlined. Now, Fightful say they did reach out directly to the Outrunners and were only told, quote, I can neither confirm nor deny that we are old enough slash too young to sign or not sign, end quote. Now, Nigel McGuinness, of course, he is set hopefully, for a big match against Brian Danielson at AEW Dynamite Grand Slam this week. And he had a final message slash warning for the American Dragon this weekend on Collision. On the September 21st episode of AEW Collision, Nigel McGuinness called out AEW World Champion Brian Danielson for being pathetic and hiding behind a fake injury because he fears him. Nigel said that while the fans cheer Brian, they identify with Nigel. Tony Schiavone stood up for Danielson, saying Danielson is not afraid, he's simply not cleared. Nigel dismissed Tony's claims. Nigel said that if Danielson shows up, he will beat him, he will destroy him, and he will finally have vindication. Nigel closed his promo by saying, if there is a God in heaven, it will happen. If there's not, may the devil hear my prayer. Of course, this match is reportedly set for this Wednesday. McGuinness and Danielson will take place if Danielson is cleared to wrestle. McGuinness swooped in and asked for the bout once Darby Allen gave up his AEW World title match against Danielson after John Moxley told Darby that Danielson wouldn't make it to Grand Slam. Moxley suffocated Danielson with a plastic bag at AEW All Out, and Danielson has not been heard from or seen since. McGuinness and Danielson had many wars against each other in Ring of Honor in the 2000s. They last wrestled against each other back in 2009. 
Speaking of Grand Slam, a match has been confirmed as part of this rivalry between Jeff Jarrett and Hangman Adam Page. Jeff Jarrett wants to settle things with Hangman. On the September 21st episode of Collision, Jeff Jarrett challenged Hangman Page to a lumberjack strap match at AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. Jarrett mentioned the Dark Order, uh, the Bang Bang Gang, and the conglomeration, Jay Lethal and Satnam Singh as Lumberjacks. The bout was made official by Tony Schiavone after a video of the challenge was uh, revealed. Though Jarrett mentioned the match taking place at Dynamite Grand Slam, the graphic for the match doesn't make it clear if the match will take place on the Dynamite or Collision portion of the show. AW Collision Grand Slam will be taped after Dynamite Grand Slam. Hangman has been on a warpath against everyone who stood in his way as he tried to take out former AW world champion swerve strickland now another match set for aw grand slam is soraya versus jamie hater in this soraya's rules match now soraya is scheduled to face jamie hater in a soraya rules match on aw collision grand slam this week now in order to get some clarification on what this match will be harley cameron explained soraya's rules on the september 21st episode of aw collision the full set of rules and they of course favor soraya heavily are as follows quote one there are no rules except for the following two you cannot use weapons unless you are soraya Three, you must obey the 10 count unless you are Soraya. Four, no biting, choking, closed fist, hair pulling, or groin kicking unless you are Soraya. Five, no hammerlocks. Soraya never liked those anyway. Six, no outside interference unless you are a friend of Soraya's. Seven, no rope breaks unless you are Soraya. Eight, the match must only begin with offense from Soraya. Nine, Jamie Hater is a slag. Ten, the winner receives an autographed copy of Soraya's autobiography available now for pre-order. So those rules seem pretty cut and dry. Now, Britt Baker, there's been a lot of speculation about the status of the former AEW Women's World Champion after we haven't seen or heard from her since AEW All In. But All Elite Wrestling has announced that Britt Baker will compete at the Dynamite 5th anniversary on October 2nd. This will be Baker's first match since she failed to capture the AEW TBS Championship from Mercedes Monet at AEW All In at Wembley Stadium. Serena Deeb issued a challenge to Baker wanting to welcome her back in her return match. This joins, of course, Will Ospreay versus Ricochet set for the AEW International Championship championship on the fifth anniversary show. Chris Jericho's match for AEW Collision Grand Slam has now been revealed as well. AEW has announced the conglomeration, that being Ring of Honor World Champion Mark Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly and Orange Cassidy will face the learning tree Chris Jericho, Big Bill and Brian Keith in a Tornado Trios match at AEW Collision Grand Slam on September 28th. Cassidy defeated Jericho on Wednesday's AEW Dynamite, but Jericho said he was not done with Cassidy and his friends. So it seems like this match is now set for Collision Grand Slam. Speaking of Collision, this past weekend, the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles were online and retained and included blood, barbed wire boots to the balls and brutal bumps punctuated a bunkhouse brawl for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. Samuel Guevara and Dustin Rose defeated Mike Bennett and Matt Taven to retain the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles on the September 21st AEW Collision. The match featured several participants bleeding, Matt Taven getting a gnarly bump, uh, back bump that bent a steel chair completely and Samuel Guevara crashing through a table from the top of a ladder. The finish of the match, however, came when Dustin Rose wrapped his cowboy boot and barbed wire and kicked Mike Bennett square in the nuts before dropping in with the final cut and allowing Sammy Guevara to hit a swan tom bomb from the top of the ladder to pin Bennett for the victory. So that match, of course, was on AEW Collision this past weekend. Now, there have been two bunkhouse brawls in AEW. The first saw Dustin team up with QT Marshall to defeat the Butcher and the Blade as Dustin continues to show that succeeding in a bunkhouse environment is a Rhodes family tradition. Fortunately, Maria Canellis Bennett was not ringside to see her husband's testicles punctured like a soon-to-be flat tire with a nail through it. Also, speaking of Sammy Guevara, looks like he's on a collision course with AEW Continental Champion Kazuchika Okada. On the September 21st episode of AEW Collision, Sammy Guevara issued a challenge to Kazuchika Okada to face him in an AEW Continental Championship Eliminator match at AEW Collision Grand Slam. If Guevara wins, he will challenge Okada for the AEW Continental Championship at AEW Dynamite's fifth anniversary next week. A bit of an update here when it comes to the Vince McMahon lawsuit filed by Janelle Grant as well as the criminal investigation into the former WWE chairman. The legal team for Janelle Grant, the former WWE employee accusing Vince McMahon of sexual abuse and trafficking, who is suing not only McMahon but former WWE head of talent relations John Laurinaitis and the company itself held a press conference last week. Grant's legal team as well as her new PR firm representation spoke ahead of the release of Mr. McMahon, a Netflix docuseries chronicling the former executive's downfall. Currently, 
Grant suit is stayed through December, according to her team, as the Southern District of New York conducts a non-public investigation into McMahon. During Thursday's press conference, Grant's attorney Ann Callis and her PR representation, Kendra barkoff Lamy of the firm SKDK, were asked if they were frustrated with the slowness of the criminal investigation that paused Grant's civil suit. Callis said that they are hopeful for an imminent indictment. Quote, we want our civil case to be back on track again too, because we are stayed, Callis said. But no, there's no frustration with the Southern District of New York at all. I was a judge for a long time, a criminal judge for a long time in state court, and I know these things take some time. We want it to be right, not fast. Callis and Grant's team previously said they hope the docuseries on the streaming service will cover man's abhorrent actions in an accurate manner. Callis also said that prior to the stay in Grant's case, they had heard from others who are victims of the WWE. She noted that due to the ongoing non-public investigation, they have not spoken to any current victims. And finally, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns had a cinematic segment that many people are talking about this past Friday night on SmackDown. New reports have indicated who put together this face-off between the former and current undisputed WWE champion. Ahead of the two-time WrestleMania rivals, temporary team-up against the bloodline at Bad Blood, Reigns and Rhodes met in the middle of the former's Alamata, that being Georgia Tech's Bobby Dodd Stadium, to talk things through. Per PW Insider, the well-received video package was shot earlier this week with Jeremy Borash, WWE NXT Senior Director of Content and Development, on hand to produce. Borash has reportedly become CCO Triple H's go to for on location segments and continued his own working relationship with director of current development Rob Fee also on scene for the filming as they have done for other projects and segments as of late. In a follow up PW Insider further reported that despite Reigns losing his wise man within storyline Paul Heyman was also intricately involved in the segment with personal direction to the talent for the scene. Reigns was absent from SmackDown itself aside from the segment while Rhodes would appear following the main event to save Kevin Owens from a beating at the hands of the bloodline Owens was also shown to be watching the segment between Rhodes and Reigns, teasing his unhappiness at the idea of the foes teaming together, and that became the central theme of Rhodes' save as KO stood behind him with the steel chair in hand. The turn never came, however, with the show ending with a reluctant acceptance of the help. But there you go, guys. Latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe button right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video. Click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you again very soon.